So I've been joined in the studio by Mr. Johnson Isiedunkitia. He is the General Secretary of the National Democratic Congress, NDC. Good morning, sir. Good morning. It's, it's good to have you here. We are grateful. Thank and you very much. yes, so we'll move on. Just gone by, we had uh, Honorable Boabia Samoa here. I yeah. think you, you did see him. So we are trying to see how the two major political parties are gearing up for uh, 2020 elections, you know, within a very difficult and, if you like, unprecedented time in, 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 in the country and indeed in the world. Difficult times. And we are trying to understand that. How is the NDC doing, uh, the major opposition party, in terms of gearing up? You know, how are you able to reach uh, the electorates and all of that? Thank you very much. If you view the situation uh, in comparison with what we've been doing in the country in the past, you, you end up concluding that um, the time available for our campaigning will be limited. Mm -hmm. But by well standards, it's not limited at okay. all. Because... Uh, Ghana is just one of the few countries where campaigning begins almost immediately after the swearing exactly. in of, of a president. I know of democracies where campaign is restricted to the last three months to the election. Uh, Denmark, for instance, immediately after elections, all political parties are required to pull down their billboards and everything, and campaigning is banned. So campaigning for the next election is open 90 days to the election. election. If you breach the rule, you are in, in trouble. So, and I, be, I want to believe that uh, it will be a good practice to mm. emulate mm. in our country mm. so that uh, every president will have the time the space, and space yeah. to govern. It reduces cost as well. Precisely, so that... Uh, uh, we will just concentrate campaigning in the last three months. So, mm. well, we haven't legislated for it, yeah. but uh, God has brought it. So we'll see how we can manage with Silver the, lining. The, yes, yes. <laughs> right. Yes. But the, the, and that's perhaps what makes this election year quite peculiar. As you rightly said, mm -hmm. electioneering begins right after swearing in. We see it happening. But, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is what I observe, that the last part of 2019, for instance, the last quarter. In, in, in previous years, if you like, prior to the election year, you'd see a lot of you know, election year and picking up from sure. that part of the year. We didn't see that happening much last year. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the NDC was you know, engaged in that whole thing with the EC about the voters register. So pr pretty much you were preoccupied with that. And then we come into the first quarter of 2020, and then we are hit by you know, covid uh, 19 and it also brings everything to a standstill so indeed when you're looking at electioneering within the 2020 um, election year there is some peculiarity in which we need to see how best the parties are going to you know deal yeah, with yeah yeah uh, we're not quite during the last quarter of 2019 as it may appear to you we're doing several things okay. at the same time um, we established our um, uh, manifesto committee, mm -hmm. which has still been working and is still working. Sure. Obviously, are, that one are, can go on without. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, are, yeah. we are about finalizing the manifesto. Uh, you realize that we're engaged in a speak out session that has been disrupted somehow, but so far, what we have done uh, has given us sufficient material to manage, okay. even in, uh, if we are not able to uh, finish with the other. Um, um, regions. And so uh, the campaign is pretty much on. I think that it's not as if one party is, one party is campaigning and the others are not. not. So if we are all limited to <laughs> three the months same or whatever, yeah. we, we will try to, to manage within it. Very well. And you, you talk about the Manifesto Committee, which has been in place since last year yeah. and um, working. So how, how, how soon are we to expect uh, the Manifesto from the NDC? It's six months into the election, so uh, perhaps yeah, we one, should be looking at that. How soon do you think? Manifesto making uh, is not as if they are independent so that when they finish, then they go out there to, to, uh, to announce. 
the time to announce your manifesto, time to announce your running mate and all that, they fit into a program and strategy of the party, mm -hmm. uh, which we will announce pretty soon so that everybody will know how the sequencing of events will, mm -hmm. will follow from now to the elections. Right. Now you talk about uh, the announcement of a running mate. Obviously, people are looking forward to that. Yeah. Um, it's not, it wouldn't be the first time that the announcement of a running mate has been you know, uh, if you like, um, uh, delayed, using that word advisedly, because mm -hmm. we, we don't know that historically announcements have been made, you know, around the same time or even later. So that necessarily is not, but there appears to be that, you know, eagerness among the populace to see who President John Mahama is going to announce as a running mate. Now you have that outstanding, and then there is, you know, a manifesto to be outdoored at some point, but looking at the campaign moving forward. Uh, we know that the NPP has announced recently its campaign team. The NDC has not. What are the plans in that regard? Because you're looking at, there's a limited time, truth be told. Yeah. And so we need to see how the NDC is gearing up. So what, 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 what do you have in terms Thank of the campaign manager? What is, uh, yeah. There is no standard practice of when to announce your <laughs> running mate, how to announce your uh, campaign team and so on so that uh, it's made to look as if if MPP announces something, then uh, there is uh, some agency on the other parties to, to do the same. Every party has a way oh, of definitely. managing its definitely. affairs. And uh, otherwise, MPP will not be concerned that we haven't announced our running mate when they <laughs> don't have a flag bearer. <laughs> they say they do. They don't. They, they don't have they do. a flag bearer. They don't have a running mate. They have about 150 parliamentary mm -hmm. seats to fill, mm -hmm. and yet they divert people's attention onto our running mate and create. So why that? Why that interest the then? I, I think oh, it, is, it is just an opposition made okay. uh, thing. It's okay. an opposition made thing because uh, I'm not sure our people are worried that we don't have a running mate because this is not the first time we are going to nominate a running mate, and 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 so. Uh, the constitutional timeline is nowhere near, and so on. So it is I, just... I flagged that for discussion, but just carry mm -hmm. on with that, yeah. It is just a creation of uh, the government and MPP to divert <laughs> attention from burning national issues. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, why, if you don't have a flag bearer, you don't have a running mate, you have more than 150 parliamentary seats to uh, uh, parliamentary okay. candidates to select. At least we are almost through with our parliamentary candidates. We have a flag bearer. Why won't you be concerned about the work you haven't done? Mm -hmm. And you are telling out, oh, you don't have a running mate. You don't have a running mate. What about you who don't have a flag bearer? <laughs> <laughs> they insist that they do have a flag bearer. So are hope. they not going to do presidential mm -hmm. primaries? Yes. If they insist they have a flag bearer, then whatever they have uh, slated to do by way of selecting of a flag bearer is a charade. And they shouldn't be fooling their party members if they think they have a flag mm. bearer. Mm. Now you talk about the running mate, and in my, I mean, my premise <laughs> to my question, I did indicate that it yeah. wouldn't be the first time because we do know that it happens. Yeah, yeah. But my question is, is it looking at how you know, we campaign and the fact that you would need to sell a candidate, if you like, mm -hmm. to the people. Mm -hmm. Do you think that that is a, is a, is, is a good practice where you, you, you wait till, you know, a last moment, then you announce, whether by strategy or by coincidence or whatever? Do you think that's the way to go? Perhaps we need to look at, we've done this for a long time, maybe perhaps it's about time we started looking at something differently. And it's not only peculiar to the NDC. The NPP has the also done similar things. The presidential elections in Ghana are called presidential because you focus on electing a president. president. So running mate is just somebody who just uh, support the, the, the president. So you think so they don't add the, any weight to the ticket? Because well, people argue I don't that think the, 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 the vice of, president or the vice, the, the running mate... I don't think the weight of a running mate should be uh, more important than okay. the, the presidential candidate. So you assess the presidential candidate if you want him to be your president. You forget about who, the running mate. You, you, that is... Uh, him you vote for mm -hmm. and it is in his absence that uh, you have a vice president maybe acting 
But which is and why so, that should be in, and so, should be of interest to the electorate, shouldn't it? Because if the precedent is not mm, there, mm -hmm. you have this person stepping in. And we saw the instance of, I mean, God bless his soul, um, 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 former president J.E. Mills. Sure. He passed and then yes. um, Mr. Mahama had to step yes, in. So yes. don't you think that it is essential who we consider? But why are you not worried about the principal person? Oh, no, we are, we are worried <laughs> the, about the that The person too. you are going to vote for. We are worried about that too. It's more important than... Uh, who partners with him. The, the one who partners with him, the constitution also says that he must be somebody who can step in the shoes of the president at any time mm. and so on. So it is legitimate to also expect that the, the person who partners with him can also step in. Sure. But that should not be your preoccupation over the person who is the frontliner. Because it is the person who is a frontliner you are going to vote for. Okay, but I, 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 I well, I just argue <laughs> that it shouldn't be one or the other. Look at it together because no, there's a real likelihood a reason of one coming in. And we have, have had that, you know, instance in our political history. I talked about. I'm saying that there's the a reason why those. you don't have the picture of the flag bearer and the picture of the running mate on the ballot box because you are voting to choose a president. No doubt about that. Yes. So, how is that going, that search for a running mate? I'm you are the, you are the general secretary of the party. Of the issue. Search. Our constitution is very very clear. Sure. Article forty three says that the flag bearer selects his running mate in consultation of the national executive mm -hmm. committee. So the selection, the proposal will be made, and then our views will be sought. Mm. Our views have not been sought yet. So mm. it tells you that uh, uh, you even if the proposal has been made, it has not reached our level for me to be able to comment on it. Very well. Well, somebody, um, I'm not somebody, some people say that um, um, looking at the, the person of Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, um, it appears that... Who is Mahmoud Baumia? The Vice President of the Republic of Ghana. Yes, but he's not a... Um, I haven't yet. finished my question. So why are you... <laughs> I haven't finished my question. Why are you I haven't finished my question. <laughs> no, no, why are you preempting my question? Okay, go then ahead. clearly you know where okay, I'm going. go ahead. It looks like you know where I'm going. Yes, so let because me, you, let you are me. all... You, have, you, have, you, you seem to have, to have jumped the gun. No, but... Into assuming you, you that... You are preempting MPP, my question. MPP delegates don't matter. You are preempting my question. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Yes. Is, 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 is that... I, I, is a party considering somebody in that light, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, because to do what as a running mate? That kind, I, why, do you why? have that kind of criteria? Why should we do that? I'm asking. No, but why are you not saying the party is not considering any other person, and you are pointing at Mahmoud Baumia? And the point is, uh, Honorable, I do, I, you do know, Mr. Insane. <laughs> yeah, uh, there might be do some do. reason for exactly. your standard of measurement. Exactly. And I want to find out exactly, that reason. Exactly my point. You know, we have these conversations within the bigger context of what is happening. Mm. And so we don't lose sight of the discourse mm. that happens outside the yeah. walls of this. And clearly, yeah. you do know that. Mm. People are saying that Mahmoud Baumia, mm. the Vice President of the mm. Republic, is mm. a thorn in the flesh of the NDC. And so, in trying to <laughs> maybe, counter that, I'm saying... <laughs> maybe well, those, those who say so, but I'm okay. not one of you're the saying you don't, who you're, you're saying you don't know that no, is no, the person of the thing. He is not a thorn in our flesh. In fact, sure. if he gets the chance of becoming the running mate, it will be, dis uh, it will be advantageous to NDC's campaign. And I'm saying that's your <laughs> opinion, which yes. I respect. But I'm <laughs> yes. saying you don't yeah. know that there's a perception out there. So because your opinion is different from the perception. Do you or do you not know that there's that Those perception? Those who hold that perception are engaged in something else. So indeed, there is that perception. We don't believe that Mahmoudou Baumia is any thorn in NDC's flesh at all. In fact, the way he has mm -hmm. messed his own reputation mm -hmm. up, it will be very advantageous for us if he gets the slot to be <laughs> a running mate of MPP. Very well. And um, he will be a very easy candidate to deal with. Very well. We do have... Um, <laughs> because uh, all his records are there, whatever he says sure. and so on. He has you created back, a, certain, back to him. a certain perception about himself. So it will be very easy mm. for us going into the campaign if... Uh, any running mate of NDC had to contend with Dr. Very, Mahmoud. Very well. We have, we have a soundbite we'll play in respect of Dr. <laughs> Baumia. But before then, <laughs> let, before then, on, I, I, Mr. Sidin uh, Ketia. Yes. I believe, well, as, as a political watcher, I, mm. I, 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 I have noticed a certain, if you like, 
trend where there is this back and forth between um, the vice president, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, and your flag bearer. And these are people who are not contesting, i.e. the same position. And so to see that happening, it's quite intriguing because you don't see that kind of exchange between the president and the former president, which you would expect because they are on the same level. And you clearly have indicated that you don't necessarily need to look at, you know, the vice presidential candidate because really it is about the person at the forefront. Why do you think there's that trend where we see this it back is and a forth? Strategy. Some people call it jabs. It is a strategy of MPP. But, but when we have, they want to we have deal former with, president and tell, uh, responding as well. Something. When they want to deal with a big man, they send somebody who is not of his stature. So that in trying to respond to that person, you bring yourself down to his level. And it has, it has been MPP strategy all along. You remember when uh, President Mills was there, MPP pushed... Uh, somebody who later became the central regional minister. Um, 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 he's now dead. He was permanently attacking Professor Mills, calling him names. There were times he called uh, Professor Mills a chamber port and all other things. So it was, I mean, some Strategy. job that had been assigned to him mm. so that should Professor Mills decide to respond, then he brings himself to the level of that person. So I see that happening with Dr. Baumia and President Mahama. So why does the president it is a respond strategy the former president? For them, the former president, you see that most of the times, it is not the former president who reacts to Baumia. It is what former president Mahama has said, that Baumia is pushed to react. And at some point, MPP has tried to play that trick on some of us because consistently where they, we had to engage in any media uh, engagement, you see that somehow they were arranged with the media house. <laughs> that, oh, General Secretary, I see Dunkatia is going, let's put Director of Communication or somebody mm -hmm. below a General Secretary. And I've been complaining. That's why I have said consistently that no, if you want a general secretary to meet me, bring your general secretary and let's engage. If you want directors of communications to engage, I have a director of communication whom I'll give to you so that you can engage. So it is a strategy of MPP that mm -hmm. uh, uh, they, they will just want to match a senior person with somebody down there so that when you go down to engage, then you are bringing yourself to his level. Mm. You saw that happening with Abronye, who is persistently pushed to attack President Mahama. So if President Mahama decides to reply Abronye, then the conversation is brought to the level of Abronye. That is why the lawyers of President Mahama have decided to resort to the, uh, uh, the law. We started to build uh, okay, so to deal with, with him in, in respect yes, of that. Yes, well, yes. just for um, purposes of the record, we had so, here earlier, I mm -hmm. indicated that we had here the uh, Director of Communications for the NPP, mm -hmm. and we had intended to have uh, the General Secretary, bon John Buedu, mm -hmm. but he couldn't make it, and so that we definitely had always, And he did say that. That is so always going to be the case. If I had accepted that... I was coming to meet John Boadu here. You come and you see Boabia Samoa <laughs> sitting here. So that when you are talking, the, that, the, the conversation right. is now reduced that, to the level of director of but communication they, they, instead of general secretary. They are secretaries. in a retreat. And yeah, so he couldn't <laughs> make it. But, but, uh, but Mr. Say, that's, that's quite a serious uh, allegation you're making. That's what they have been that's doing. That's what allegation. they have been doing. Mm. That's, that's what they have been doing. Have it's not about doing. your station alone. It's about several stations mm. in the country. That's what they've been doing. So I have always told them that if you, are, you want me to engage in some discussion and it's going to be general secretary by general, uh, and, and general secretary, well, I'll consider it. But I will not come and engage with somebody who is an appointee of my colleague general secretary elsewhere. Very well. So let's go back to that tape I indicated will be playing uh, of Dr. Mahmoud Baumia for Mr. Johnson is in KTS reaction. Let's take a listen to that. 
after eight years that they had in office in government to demonstrate their prowess in managing this country and managing the, the economy. After eight years, what did they leave us with? They left us with declining agriculture, declining industry, interest rates were high, inflation was high. In fact, if you look at the data, in terms of macroeconomic performance in any economy since the year 2000. The tenure of the former president was the worst in, in, in terms of outcome. He advised officials who are politicking to desist from it. My humble advice to former president Mahama is to take a look at the data this is not green book data. Oh. This is just the data, right? Take a look at the data before you speak. Otherwise, you will end up embarrassing yourself. He was confident on government determination to maintain a strong economic stability. There is no government in the history of the Fourth Republic, the first term government in the history of the Fourth Republic, that has provided as much infrastructure across all the sectors, whether you're talking about roads, you're talking about water, you're talking about t toilets, you're talking about education, you're talking about health. Yeah, there we saw Dr. Mahmoud Baumia responding to, you know, something that uh, former President John Dramani Mahama had said. And it's, it's received a lot of, um, re there's been some reaction to that. And we've had Professor um, Ahoy issue a statement and, and, and a whole lot. What do you make of that? Again, going back to this trend I talked about earlier, where there is, you know, this whole <laughs> jabbing you see, going my sister, on. The thing about MPP is that if you ask them a difficult question, they avoid that question and set their own question and answer it. All that Dr. Baumia set out to do is to ask his own question and answer. He wasn't answering the specific allegation that President Mahama raised, which was that the government has been engaged in cooking figures. And that is, they present a set of figures to the parliament and present a different set of figures to the IMF and our development partners. I thought that if Dr. Baumia had responded to that issue, it would have settled all these matters. But of course, because it, it is a difficult issue to answer, he decided to want to compare the performance of President Mahama to uh, their own performance using the data which we are, we are discrediting. So if they say the, the data you are talking about is wrong, and you are saying that I'm comparing your performance uh, with my performance with the wrong data, how can you, if you, you are taking our measurements, you know, maybe my waist and your waist, uh, you use uh, uh, the, the, the tape measure. <laughs> Why? Do you also okay, look like you. a mosquito? <laughs> you. <laughs> you see, if you use a tape measure, which begins from uh, maybe zero to whatever, 36, you get mine to be, you know, 20, uh, 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 29 or 30. Mm -hmm. Now, if you are using another tape measure, part of it is cut off, and you begin from maybe five inches, and you get 29, are they the same? They are not the same. So the data you are referring to is the problem. You are cooking the figures. And we have produced the evidence that this is evidence that you are cooking figures. Mm. And the IMF have come to collaborate our point that indeed your data is wrong. And you still come on radio and television telling people to look at the data, which is wrong. Mm. <laughs> so that is the problem. Right. Okay, now let's move on um, to looking at going into, you know, the 2020 elections, particularly looking at the political parties and how they engage with the Electoral Commission. Um, before COVID-19 became what it is, there was that, you know, unresolved issue about the voters register. 
um, the EC had you know, carried on and said that they were going to start the process or the exercise on the 18th of April, but well, COVID happened, that didn't occur. Uh, as it is now, what is the way forward? How, is the, how are the parties, and for that matter the NDC, engaging with the EC to you know, overcome this issue ahead of, um, or go, as we go into 2020 elections? It's just six months away, really and truly. You see, we are where we are because the Electoral Commission set out to solve a problem that didn't exist. And that is where <laughs> they see themselves in a problem. We don't see them having a problem. We don't see the electoral process in Ghana in any crisis at this stage beyond what the Electoral Commission decided to create for itself. Because normally, at this stage, you will be preparing to do a limited registration, which is to add maybe one million people who have uh, come of age from uh, the last quarter of 2019 mm -hmm. to date. And it will be around one million. So you add one million to the register and you are ready to go into the election. And we indicated that there was no reason for Electoral Commission to want to do a whole register. So they created the impression that they wanted a new register. And unfortunately for them, the whole program uh, towards getting a new register has run into this crisis because of these uh, pandemic complications. And so instead of them realizing that they are just acting like uh, Dan Coyote uh, chasing, fighting non-existent enemies and declaring victory for themselves. They should better, if today they decide that, let us revert back to the standard practice. They will have no problem. They are in this problem because of their own creation. And so we are watching them to see how they wriggle themselves out of the problem they because created for themselves. Obviously, the NDC's position had been there was no need for a register. There's no need for a register. And if you are, you are thinking about uh, going to the regular practice, we are not late at all for a limited registration. But that's fine. But looking mm -hmm. at the need for social distancing and all those other protocols we mm -hmm. need to observe, mm -hmm. do you think that we are in a position to actually go ahead with the limited registrations and move on to do exhibitions? We because can do limited would... registration somewhere in July, where I believe uh, so that is we would when have, we would is have a bit... seen how COVID-19 will progress. If there is a need to do limited mm -hmm. registration, July will not be too But late. in the case where But it if happened... you want to do a full register, even today we are already late. Mm -hmm. So you, are, you have walked yourself into a problem where there is no problem. And so you are fighting your own imaginations. They walked themselves into this problem. And that is why they find it difficult to engage. But there's a time when we need to engage even the more. Well, looking you at ask them the why they are not engaging. So, <laughs> yeah, but I ask the question that for the limited registration, in the event that mm -hmm. COVID-19 doesn't go away mm -hmm. in the manner that we expect it to go, because what the experts are saying is that until we get a vaccine and treatment mm -hmm. or a drug for the treatment, mm -hmm. our best bet is to keep on wearing our masks, ensuring that we socially distance and all mm -hmm. of that. So mm -hmm. how do we get limited registration done in the context of COVID-19? And that is if... We haven't by got, a certain time, we, we haven't have gotten not there. gotten if we the get words. there. No, but we need to anticipate it we and get plan, there, we which is what? We look at the situation, and if it doesn't permit it, we all put our heads together and find a way forward. Yes, but wouldn't that be waiting too late for we us to decide waiting. what it is? How about... I'm saying that if the Electoral Commission is preparing for limited registration, it is not too late now. They can prepare for limited registration, which can happen any time from June, July, thereabout. If at June... July, 
it is still not possible to have mm -hmm. a limited registration. Then what is the question? We will sit at that time, evaluate the situation, and, and chart the way forward. But I guess I just want us to look at the <laughs> possibility, because at this point we can... But you are not there yet. They no, are... <laughs> that's, that, I, that's a fair point, but mm -hmm. we are not there yet. But the point is we can anticipate what the situation will be, i.e. that are, we cannot go and do registration as we used to do there it. So how do we do it? There are several possibilities. Yes. If limited registration at that point is not permissible, mm -hmm. we can go with the existing register. Because the purpose of uh, doing a limited registration is to capture more of the people who have uh, 10, 18. Uh, 10, 18, so that you have as many as possible of those people on the register and giving opportunity to vote. It is not possible to get everybody on mm -hmm. the register because even uh, there must be a cutoff point somewhere. The cutoff point is always dictated by the time that is available for the other preparations mm -hmm. to the elections mm -hmm. to take place. Mm -hmm. For instance, if you don't close the register, you can't do the you cannot processes. do yeah. other processes. Mm -hmm. I mean, filing of nomination must be based on the mm -hmm. final register. Mm -hmm. uh, printing mm -hmm. of ballot papers must be based mm -hmm. on the final mm -hmm. register. Determining the optimum number of uh, polling stations for voting must be based on the final mm -hmm. register. So there is a so cut off. Always a cut off point. point, yes. So when there is a cut off, and somebody who turns 18 a day after the cut off will not be part Definitely. of it. Definitely. It wouldn't be, yes. Uh -huh. So if you have an existing register already, and the limited registration is an attempt to bring in more people yes. you know, before you cut off. And if it is not possible to have a limited registration, you already have a finalized register yes. but, with but which that, you can yes. vote. The, the challenge will be that you have a certain number of people who have been, uh, who find themselves beyond the cut off point. But, that, but the example you're giving suggests that for this one, there would be no limited registration at all for you to even talk about a cut-off no, point. No, you are which asking would talk me, about the cut-off point, if you are talking about uh, the, the cut, if there, the, there if happens there is, to be no registration, then the cut-off point will be assumed to be the last registration that was exactly, done, the Which would have then meant that for a given year, we wouldn't have given the opportunity for people who attend 18, and which people would say amounts to disenfranchising well, some people. If, and we've you, had, if you cut off at even November, you still have people who will be disenfranchised anyway. That's the Don't point. you? Definitely. And you but are to lucky... Not give, to not give an opportunity and you at are lucky, all is another thing. Please. You are lucky that this is a season where we have had to do registration in the last quarter of 2019. Mm -hmm. You understand? Previously, you wouldn't even have that registration in the last quarter of a year. So that by the time you do the final limited registration, like uh, um, um, in, the, in the immediate past elections, we did registration in 2014, and then we did a limited registration only in 2016. So two-year period. Okay. So... But in this particular case, we did this limited registration in the last quarter of 2019. So if we have to go into elections in uh, December, December, you are even less than, you, are, you, you have left less than even one year. You understand? So it is not as bad as a situation where if the last registration was done two years ago, the numbers that you are contending with would have been much, much bigger. But in this particular one, it will be uh, uh, less than a year. So, so we'll, we'll, people will be disenfranchised, but not on a large scale is what you're yes, saying? Yes, and that's, because that it will be, okay. be less than a year anyway. Mm. And you're saying understand. that should be okay? Well, it is because as, we've had past, it is as we've okay. We've had instances in the past where political parties have been up in arms because the EC no, was... You are talking about an act of God, not something that is of deliberate planning. Mm -hmm. You are asking me if we come to a point where limited registration mm -hmm. is not possible, possible, what are the options? And yes. I'm giving you this option. And I'm it doesn't mean that, that it's practical. It, it doesn't feasible. mean that that is the best. Sure. But that is the, 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 the best available when you have this act of God. Mm. 
You understand? Okay. You yourself were complaining that we were having more than one year campaigning. Now we are going to have I three months. I think we, both of us, <laughs> now we are going to have three months. So what is that, it? So that you, are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are, you are, you agree with me that we are not in normal, normal times. times definitely. But that is one of the options that we can go to. Remember in 1992, the 1992 elections, we, we used the register that was prepared for the referendum that was used to, uh, uh, to validate or approve the, uh, the national constitution. So there was no limited registration at all. We went into the elections. Mm. So if you have a situation where through an act of God, um, things cannot uh, happen as normal as you would have liked it. Then you come you make down do with to what the you next have. normal. Mm. Yeah. Very well. So if, if everything should, if the EC should resort at some point to, um, you know, the protocols around or that have been recommended, social distancing, if the EC is able to put in place measures that would guarantee that indeed would, would be able to do see, these things in, it, a, in a condition where... I find it difficult to conjecture how you can do voter registration, whether you have social distancing, mm. whether you have, uh, uh, what do you call it, protective clothing. I'm told that EC has procured protective clothing. And it's interesting because, you see, I made a point much, much, much earlier on mm. when the government was complaining that they did not have PPEs. And I said that if the government uh, had a choice between providing PPEs for health personnel and the electoral commission, they would choose to supply electoral commission with PPEs first. Because it looks as if their focus is not mainly on fighting the disease. They have a bigger focus on the elections than their attention to the, to the fighting of the disease. And I, I have been proven right. Because, How so? Oh, we have been told that government is finding it difficult to procure PPEs but electoral commission has come and said that they have procured their PPEs. But the, the, electoral so, commission, so. the electoral commission is an independent. It has, it, it, it has its budget and it's able to do all uh, that it needs to so, do. And so, so from that so budget, it's been able to... How can, and that budget was approved way back, before how, COVID. How can an institution within the country have access to PPEs when the whole government in that country cannot procure PPEs for health personnel? That's my problem. So uh, is Electoral Commission going to procure PPEs to protect themselves alone and expose the population that is going to register to the disease? Because there are three types of interactions that you must protect if you are going to do registration. You have uh, the, the Electoral staff. Commission staff protecting themselves from spreading the disease amongst themselves. So they must protect <laughs> themselves from the diseases because they are working as a group. Then you have the commission staff and the general public, the interface with the commission staff and the general public, that is another area where yes, the disease yeah. can be spread. And then you have the general public amongst <laughs> themselves. So all that they are thinking about is just either the commission amongst its staff or the commission members protecting themselves from the general mm. public, but they are not worried about general public spreading the disease among, among themselves. themselves. Which, yeah, very well. So I mean, there, 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 a number of issues at. we need to look at, are quite, quite a new ones there. Mm. But um, uh, Mr. Sidney Ketel, we, we are fast approaching the end of the show, but we need mm. to look at another issue that has popped up in yeah. recent times. Um, the suspension of the former central <laughs> regional chairman and in an election year and uh, that has raised a lot of questions <laughs> and his resignation was because quote uh his suspension for, not resignation sorry sorry my bad. Has not resigned. Su suspension sorry yes. for persistent anti-party conduct yes and he has responded and said mm. that he will continue to speak the truth mm. and i mean he is that's what he's doing speaking the truth if unfortunately that does not sit well with the party too bad but he is going to continue to speak the truth. Some are saying that um, the uh, Malo Jacobs speaking the truth is what led to his suspension. And so what that suggests a level of the party not being tolerant of, if you like, dissenting views 
or people who are objective in their thinking. What is your response? Can you help me with a definition of what the truth is? Well, he is saying it. I, I, so that is his truth and not the universal truth. I, I, I can tell. <laughs> uh -huh. So everybody has his opinion of what the truth mm -hmm. is. That is why there are established systems mm -hmm. to determine where the truth lies. So the fact that uh, somebody says that I'm speaking the truth doesn't make whatever he's saying to be the truth. So uh, what it is, is, is between Alotel so, Jacobs so and the is, party, his listen, truth against what you think is the that truth. That is his truth. Mm -hmm. And that is where there is a panel where he should go and present his case. If you have a case in court and you are moving around uh, lorry stations presenting your case, it doesn't reach but the court. But his suspension was, in, was put it in doesn't the media. Reach until the he court. Had to. So we, are, we have suspended him according to our laws and invited him to go to the, face the panel and present his case there. Whatever case he's presenting outside does not influence the outcome of, of, the, uh, of the issues at all. But you see, and I, so we what, don't think that when you have a panel that is going to sit on the case, we don't think that you listen to the accused person, then you respond to what he's saying publicly. It means that you are taking over the job of the, but, uh, but of what the it committee. Is, is so we, are, we don't intend to take over the job of the committee. We don't intend to do that. So at that all, is but why we, we, we are not responding to anything that he says. But if you go and we have made a case, we have reported him to an independent mm -hmm. panel, which is not, uh, whose members are not uh, part of the National Executive Committee. That is what our, sure. our, our laws mm -hmm. provide. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you have been accused of something and uh, you have been referred to the disciplinary committee doesn't make you guilty. Definitely not. He needs Precisely. To so if he has a case to make, let him shut up and go and make the case in front of the disciplinary committee. If they think that the National Executive Committee has been mm. wrong in that approach, then they will vindicate him right. and he will resume his, well. his rights but, as but a whilst, full member of the party. But pending mm -hmm. the, 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 um, Mr. Lutte Jacobs going to the committee and making his case, I think we also mm -hmm. around can have a conversation yeah. which is totally not prejudicial to the outcome of yeah. that process which is right. that yeah, those who I mean this is a political world we're mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. we are in an election year yeah. and something similar is happening mm -hmm. around the time when something happened mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. the NPP when mm -hmm. they were in opposition mm -hmm. and the NDC back then referred to them as being very intolerant and so this is coming now people are saying well chick the chickens have, have come home to roost what, what would you say to that not at all they are Why is totally not? different How so? MPP, according to their members, was engaged in illegalities. The processes that they followed had no foundation in their constitution. We have an established disciplinary process that if you are found to be flouting the rules in the opinion of ordinary members or the executive of the party, your conduct, we don't proceed to just sack him. Your but conduct is referred to the appropriate authority. And mind you, our disciplinary committee have had occasion to sit on cases where the accused has been exonerated. Right. So the I, same I, I, with Sami Kaf, for instance, please, I'm please, told, also went to court. Can I land? Can I had a vindication. Yes, one minute. Isn't it? One minute. Very well, carry on. Yes. In the case of MPP, they proceeded to use an approach that did not exist in their constitution at all. They but were, people challenged it in court. Can Some I, people challenged it in court. If I can and explain, or you don't want to... Uh, I, I you do, are asking about have, yeah. comparison, and mm -hmm. let me explain that comparison to you. We were accusing MPP because they were using uh, procedures that had no foundation in their own constitution. You cannot have... Uh, there is a... If you choose as, a, as an institution, you can have a right of recall within your constitution. Whereby, if an executive member flouts the constitution, you have a certain number of signatures that can, if you are able to uh, gather those signatures, you recall those executives from the positions. Mm -hmm. MPP constitution, as far as we knew, did not have that right of recall. So if you have executive members who you think 
are uh, behaving in an anti-party manner. All that you need to do is to refer them to the disciplinary committee. You don't go around gathering signatures of regional executives and saying that we have gotten to test of our regional executives agreeing that these people should be removed. Then you proceed to remove them. When that procedure has no foundation in your constitution. We are acting perfectly in accordance with our constitution. And that is why we've given the member, the accused member, the opportunity to explain himself. We are not going to engage in triad in the media, or we are not going to uh, organize people and force them to say, we don't like him, so remove him, we don't like him. We are working Very according right. to the laws Mr. of Mr. Senator, we have just a minute to go, and you can't come here and not give us a message from the NDC. Going into the election 2020, <laughs> what is the message? There are people who are saying, well, the, NDP, the NDC of uh, former uh, President John Ramani Mama is only saying that when he comes, he's going to... And you, do you have, you have, or review you have or followed, so and so. What is the message you, you of NDC followed, going into 2020? You have followed in, former in a President minute. Mahama. And he's been dropping hints about concrete policies that he will be implementing. Okay. All that will be put together. One of those is uh, unfortunately or fortunately being copied and vindicated by Nana Kufuado. <laughs> A policy of one district, one hospital, is what he has tried to copy. A policy of one region, one regional hospital, is something that he has tried to copy. Our policy of, uh, uh, you know, having proper structures for each secondary school, so that you have the one just one one region, one hospital was in the NPP manifesto in 2016? No. It was. It wasn't. MPP. One district, one hospital, sorry. Uh -huh. One district, one hospital, so not one region. Uh -huh. So what did they do? We announced that we are going to do, because it has been our policy all along from even first, uh, this and, and all the 110 districts that we created, the time President Rollins was existing, all of them had district hospitals. And how and functional so, are they as of the time? They were all functional. They, as well, of the time immediately, we create, immediately we create a district. We have a standard set of infrastructure that we provide. That district must have a district hospital. The district capital must be connected to the national grid. That is electricity. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we try as much as possible to connect the capital to the regional capital we have it must have a secondary school and so so there is a set of uh, infrastructure facilities that go with the district definitely it was only when president kufour came he created districts and even some of the districts were running their offices from filling stations and then <laughs> they didn't provide <laughs> on that on it, that it, note it, i think uh, we need uh, to quite quite the quite the i was just yes, uh, we run out of time <laughs> Mr. Johnson, Mr. Nkintia, we, we want to say a big thank you to you. It's been a, an exciting time having you here. So Mr. Johnson, Mr. Nkintia has been with us here. He is the General Secretary of the National Democratic Congress. We were looking at how the NDC was gearing up or is gearing up for the 2020 elections amidst this COVID-19 pandemic. Earlier